Just like that, you guys. It's not that hard. It's really not. Hi everyone, today I'd like to show you five habits that longtime drone pilots do that many beginners don't. It is my hope that by sharing these things, you're able to have the knowledge to become a better drone pilot and do it much faster than I did over the years. And ultimately, have more fun flying your drone. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. And for those of you who are visiting for the very first time, so nice to have you here. Thank you for stopping by. My name is Russ and the primary goal of this channel is to help people enjoy the hobby of flying drones, mostly DJI ones through education and demonstration. And today I have some things that you can do that will make you feel like and look like a seasoned drone pilot. And you can start doing them today or at least start practicing some of them today. So when you're new to flying drones, it's very common and recommended to launch and land your drone from the ground, obviously, whether it be on a landing pad of some type or just on a flat, clean surface. But there are going to be times where you may have to hand launch or hand catch your drone. And once you get comfortable doing it, you, you won't even think twice about doing it. You'll start doing it every single time. And I know it sounds intimidating. Those blades can cut you quite easily but it really is more simple than most people think. So let's do a quick tutorial on how to hand launch and hand catch your drone. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is hand launch. Now, just a couple of things to hold. When you're holding the drone, when you're hand launching, you wanna pinch the belly of the drone. So the belly of the, is the bottom of the drone. What you're gonna do is you're gonna pinch it with your index finger and your middle finger, just like that. And then the other side, you're gonna have your thumb just like that. Okay, so you're pinching the drone just like this on the bottom. And then what I do is I use my ring finger and I hold it on the bottom of the drone like this, okay? Secondly, you wanna hold the drone away from you and you wanna hold it up, about a 45 degree angle just like this, okay? So hold it away from you, pinch the bottom. Lastly, and one of the most important things I can tell you if you're gonna hand launch on a regular basis is to get a lanyard. A lanyard will change your life if you're a hand launcher because it's really hard to uh, push that launch button that's in the middle of the screen and uh, if you have a lanyard it's a lot easier so and if you are left-handed this is a little more challenging uh, because you're gonna have to hold the drone in your right hand and then launch with your left hand because that launch button to get it started is on the left hand side of the screen whether you're using the phone or the RC or the RC Pro or whatever that launch button is best to be pushed with your left thumb so that was weird English right Okay, so to, uh, to initiate the launch process, I'm just gonna turn on my screen recorder here. And there we go. Okay, so we're gonna hit that little uh, arrow on the left-hand side of the screen. We're gonna tap that and then see where it says take off. This is where the lanyard comes in, very useful. Oops, I just turned my light on by accident. There we go. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold down that middle button that says take off. So I'm gonna hold this 45 degree angle. I'm gonna pinch the belly of the drone. I'm gonna hold that button down. It's gonna start the engines and just slowly let go, okay? Go up in the air just like that, and there's your hand launch, okay? Uh, now, when you're hand catching, there's a couple of things. A lot of people think it matters if you have the drone facing away from you, uh, or you shouldn't have it facing at you. That's nonsense, it doesn't matter. Leave your obstacle avoidance on. Don't turn off your obstacle avoidance, then you don't have to worry about it running into you if you inadvertently hit one of the sticks or something like that. But, uh, but you either want the drone facing directly away from you or directly at you. You don't want it facing perpendicular to you. So you don't want it facing you know, right or left because it's really hard to grab it. It's kind of awkward like that. So you want it um, facing either away or directly at you. So I'm gonna bring it down here. And when you reach up for it, don't reach for it. Put your hand out as soon as it gets down to your hand, touches your hand, then you're gonna reach up and pinch it just like you did when you launched. You're gonna pinch the belly of the drone you're gonna hold that stick down the whole time, okay? Keep holding the stick down, you'll see. Just like this, let's bring it all the way down. Okay, I'm gonna turn it to face me. You're gonna hold your hand here for a few seconds so it pauses. Keep holding the stick. It will come down if you hold still, just like that, okay? Now, I will say this. Catching it when it's facing you is a lot more intimidating than catching it away from you. I don't know why. The propellers are the same distance away from your hand, from your face, or whatever. So just know that when it's facing you, it's a little more challenging, okay? 
But hand up, wait till it touches your hand, then reach up and pinch the belly. That's all there is to it, you guys. Like I said, do this 10 times for a couple of days. It's second nature, so, uh, and it's so much more convenient. You don't have to worry about finding the perfect spot to launch from. You can launch from pretty much anywhere. So did you know that most experienced drone pilots do not use intelligent flight modes when they're recording videos and photos? Except for maybe waypoints. Waypoints is a different story. A lot of drone pilots of all levels use waypoints and I'm so happy they brought it to the Mavic 3. It's, it's amazing. It's so powerful. It allows you to get repeated flight paths over and over again. But for the most part, seasoned drone pilots fly their missions manually. You see, having that precise control and moving the drone in exactly the way that you want it to go and move the camera exactly the way that you want it to move, it, it just can't be beat by automatic modes. Plus, it kind of brings this sense of pride, I guess, when you get a beautifully done shot. Now, there's only one way to become proficient at this, and that's with a ton of practice. My suggestion is go out, find a nice wide open space and it, something that has like a single subject that you can use as your focal point and then practice moves like an orbit, you know, like a point of interest, you know, do it by yourself. Don't set the point of interest mode or, you know, do a pull away with a camera raising up at the same time. Just try to do multiple complex movements and just do that over and over again. And after doing that repeatedly, it will become naturally and you won't have to rely on those intelligent flight modes anymore. It's all about repetition. And if you wanna see what I think are the best drone moves that you need to master to make your footage look great, watch this video right here. There's a lot of videos out there that tell you the best drone moves and they say like 50 best drone moves or 100 best drone moves. You don't need that many, you guys. There's just a few key moves and then you can fine tune it after you learn how to do those. So watch that video, a lot of great information in there. So the first time you fly a drone in public, one thing that you may find very surprising is you have this feeling of anxiety, like overwhelming anxiety. You may find yourself worrying about who's watching you, who's annoyed by the sound of the drone, who's gonna call the authorities, and maybe even who wants to steal it from you. So there's so many different feelings that you probably don't realize until you start flying. So what most newer drone pilots do to avoid those feelings is they fly inconspicuously. They tend to hide, you know, maybe sitting in their car or in a secluded corner under a tree somewhere or maybe somewhere else that's hidden from the public eye. But in my opinion, what you should actually do, and many seasoned drone pilots do this, is be loud and proud when you fly. Act like you actually don't give a shit who sees you and present yourself as someone who knows what they are doing. Even if you really don't know what you're doing, you have to have confidence and show people that you are not trying to hide from them. And this will make normal people less skeptical about your intentions. And some may even become interested and come and visit with you. Now I say normal people because there are always gonna be some ignorant ding-dongs that are gonna be triggered by you flying a drone. But even those people are gonna be less likely to engage you if you actually look like a professional. And even if you're not doing a commercial flight or you know a professional flight, who cares? I would still maybe set up some cones, wear an orange vest, make it look like you are a professional. People are not gonna bother you if it looks like you're working. Again, there's gonna be exceptions to that rule, but it just helps. Now, one of the most difficult things to learn when you start flying a drone, you're trying to get great footage, is all of the different settings, the camera settings, the drone control settings. Like there's just so many things to learn, but there's one thing that I think a lot of people avoid, even intermediate pilots avoid, and that's messing with the expo settings in your control sticks. Like the expo settings are something that a lot of people don't understand, but they can be really important when you start to try to develop professional looking footage. And so the expo settings basically tell the drone how quickly to re react to the inputs that you do on the sticks. Let's just run outside and do a quick tutorial on what the expo settings are and how to control them or how to set them that work best for you and what you're trying to achieve. All right, so let's take a look at expo settings. Like I said, most beginners don't care about expo settings. They have no idea what it does and uh, just don't wanna deal with it. So I'm gonna show you just to help give you a little sense of how this can make a difference when you're making, trying to make cinematic footage, okay? 
So we're going to click on the three little dots, upper right hand corner, and then you'll go to control, and then you'll click on gain and expo tuning, and then you're going to scroll down, we're going to ignore all that for right now, and right there is the expo settings. So you can see right now, my pitch roll is set to 0.27, my yaw is 0.19, and my up and down is 0.1, and that's where I usually have mine. Um, and it can vary, it's really not that big of a deal if it's off by a few, but that's what I use for my settings. But I just wanna show you right now the difference, um, what this does when you turn all these down. So let's just turn the pitch and roll down. And now the pitch and roll is gonna be your right stick for most people. Okay, right stick is gonna make the drone go left and right. So I'm just gonna show you when I barely touch the stick, I'm gonna to push to the left, okay? And then I'm gonna push to the right, See how the drone reacts? Okay, now I'm gonna turn that all the way up. I'm gonna go all the way up to 0.9, okay? Now watch, when I push, just barely touch the stick to the left. Whoa, barely touch it to the right. Okay, see that? That's really, really sensitive. That's too much, all right? That is not gonna give you um, cinematic footage. So that's why I try to keep this pretty low, right around 0 0.2, 0 0.25. Let's look at yaw now. So let's turn the yaw all the way down. And this is you're gonna be your left stick, okay, going left and right. So I'm just gonna to barely touch it to the left, barely touch it to the right. Okay, now let's turn it all the way up. Left, right, okay, see how very jerky that is? Extremely uh, aggressive. So I keep this one pretty low as well, right around 0.1 to 0.2. Now finally, we're gonna do up and down. So I have mine set all the way to 0.1. That's gonna be your left stick. You're gonna push up, the drone's gonna go up. You push down, the drone's gonna go down. So let's go up, I'm just gonna barely touch it, barely touch it down. Let's do that again, up, down. See, I'm barely touching that stick. Let's go ahead and move that all the way up to 0.9. Now watch as I barely touch it, okay? Very aggressive, very, very sensitive. I prefer that one all the way down. Maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.3, you know, like I said, it's not gonna make that big of a difference, uh, but I like to have mine all the way at 0 0.1. So that kind of gives you an idea of how important the expo settings are because the more aggressive you have those, the more jerky your footage is gonna look. And like I said, most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, you're gonna want that to look as cinematic as possible. So hopefully you got some value out of that and hopefully you can go into your settings right now and see what you have your expo settings to choppy quick camera movements in aerial video it's it's a trigger for me we've all seen it you guys the drone is flying over some beautiful scenery you're like oh this is really cool but then you see this or this It drives me crazy, and I know it drives a lot of you crazy as well. And this is something that the majority of new drone pilots do. And when you see it, you know you're watching a video from someone that is just learning how to fly a drone and just learning how to capture aerial video. Unless you are flying an FPV drone. Now, there's exceptions to the rule. I don't want to trigger any FPV drone uh, enthusiasts. You know, there are exceptions. But for the most part, when you're flying a GPS camera drone, like the Mavic series, the Phantom series, uh, the Air 2S, any of those types of drones, your footage should look slow and smooth with wide angle turns. They should have slow, deliberate movements. There should be no jerky, quick movements. Again, there are exceptions to this rule, but generally it should look cinematic. So let's just do a real quick comparison and you tell me which one of these sequences looks better. This one. or do you prefer this one? So practice 
your stick control, you guys. It's one of the most important things to master. And the more you do it, the easier it will become. Once you make it a habit, you will start to notice bad drone footage more when you see it. Hey, comment anything you think professional drone pilots do that new ones don't. I'll make a follow-up video if I get enough suggestions in the comments. Also, did you learn anything valuable today? If you did, please click on that thumbs up button, that like button. I really do appreciate that. It helps the channel out so much. Subscribe if you aren't yet. And if you wanna see more videos like this one, follow me on social media at 51 Drones and watch this video right here next because it's, it's literally gonna change your life for the better. Thanks for watching today, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. And as always, fly safe and fly smart.